To understand why the F-15 exists, we have to look back at a specific moment of concern in the late 1960s. The Soviet Union unveiled a new aircraft known as the MiG-25, which was codenamed the Foxbat. When American officials saw photos of this jet, they were genuinely worried. It had massive engines and incredibly large wings. Usually, big wings on a fighter jet mean it is highly maneuverable and can turn tight circles in a dogfight. So, Western analysts assumed the Foxbat was an agile superfighter that could outfly anything the United States had. The reality was actually quite different. The MiG-25 was built mostly out of heavy steel, not lightweight materials, and those big wings were only there to keep that heavy weight in the air. It was designed to fly very fast in a straight line, but it actually turned very poorly. However, American planners didn't know that at the time. They thought they were facing a perfect air-to-air -air fighter. This misunderstanding changed everything. The Air Force decided they couldn't just upgrade their existing planes anymore. They needed a brand new aircraft designed with one specific goal, to dominate the sky and defeat this new threat. That requirement is what launched the project that eventually gave us the F-15. So, the Air Force went in a completely different direction compared to the previous decade. Before this, the main strategy was to build multi-role aircraft, planes that could drop bombs on the ground one day and fight enemy jets the next. The famous F-4 Phantom was like that. It was a jack of all trades. But the experience in Vietnam showed that when you try to make a plane do everything, it ends up being heavy and complicated, which puts it at a disadvantage in a fast-paced dogfight. To fix this, the design team for the F-15 adopted a strict philosophy that eventually became a famous slogan, not a pound for air to ground. This wasn't just a catchy phrase, it was a rigid engineering rule. It meant that if a piece of equipment, a wire or a bracket, was intended to help the plane attack targets on the ground, it was forbidden. There would be no heavy bomb racks and no complex ground tracking sensors. Every single part of the aircraft had to contribute to shooting down other planes. By stripping away all the equipment needed for bombing missions, the engineers kept the jet as light as possible. This allowed them to maximize the power of the engines, giving the F-15 enough thrust to actually accelerate while flying straight up vertically, something that was almost unheard of at the time. That ability to accelerate while going straight up is really the defining feature of the Eagle. It all comes down to a simple comparison. How much does the plane weigh versus how much push do the engines provide? The engineers fitted the F-15 with two massive Pratt & Whitney engines that were incredibly advanced for the 1970s. When you combine those powerful engines with that lightweight stripped-down frame we just talked about, you get a result that was revolutionary at the time. The amount of thrust pushing the jet forward is actually higher than the weight of the jet itself. In practical terms, this makes the aircraft behave more like a rocket than a traditional plane. Most jets have to build up speed horizontally before they can climb, and they usually slow down the steeper they go because gravity is pulling them back. The F-15 doesn't have that limitation. A pilot can take off, pull the stick back, and climb vertically to 30,000 feet in under a minute. This kind of power gave pilots a massive advantage. It meant they could decide when and where to fight. If a battle wasn't going their way, they could simply engage the afterburners and climb away to an altitude where enemy planes physically couldn't follow. It wasn't just about going fast, it was about having so much excess energy that you were effectively untouchable. To prove that this wasn't just theoretical math, the Air Force decided to strip an F-15 down to the bare essentials and go after some world records. This project was called Operation Streak Eagle. They took one of the early pre-production models to Grand Forks, North Dakota in the winter of 1975. They chose that location specifically because the air was freezing cold. Cold air is denser than warm air, which helps jet engines generate even more thrust. To make the plane as light as possible, they removed the radar, the cannon, 
the radio equipment, and even the paint. It was just a shiny, bare metal aluminum tube with engines and a cockpit. The goal was to beat the time to climb records held by the Soviet MiG-25, and the Streak Eagle absolutely crushed them. In one of the most famous runs, the jet climbed to nearly 100,000 feet. To put that in perspective, the pilot released the brakes on the runway and reached that altitude in less than four minutes. For the last part of that climb, the air was so thin that the wings weren't actually providing lift anymore. The plane was basically coasting upward on pure momentum, just like a ballistic missile. It captured eight world records in total, proving that the F-15 was unmatched in raw power before it even entered full service. But breaking records in the frozen air of North Dakota is one thing. Surviving a dogfight is something else entirely. The engineers knew the plane was fast, but the world had to wait until 1982 to see if all that technology actually worked in real combat. This brings us to the Baka Valley in Lebanon. At the time, Syrian forces had set up a dense network of surface-to-air missiles to control the airspace. When the Israeli Air Force launched a massive operation to take out those missile sites, the Syrians responded by sending up waves of their own fighter jets, mostly MiG-21s and MiG-23s. On paper, this looked like it could be a chaotic, close-range brawl. But in reality, it wasn't even close. The Israelis were flying the F-15 alongside the smaller F-16, and the difference in technology became immediately apparent. The F-15s used their powerful radars to track the Syrian jets, long before the enemy pilots even knew they were in danger. It wasn't just about the plane itself, though. It was about situational awareness. The Eagle pilots had a clear picture of the entire battlefield. They could pick their targets, fire their missiles from a distance, and reposition before the other side could react. The results of that air battle are still studied today because the numbers are staggering. Over the course of the conflict, the Israeli pilots shot down approximately 82 Syrian aircraft. The number of F-15s lost in those engagements was zero. It was so one-sided that it became known as the Bekaa Valley Turkey Shoot. This was the moment the F-15 shed its reputation as just an expensive science experiment it proved that it wasn't just a fast hot rod, it was a dominant weapon system that gave its pilots a massive advantage. After 1982, nobody questioned whether the Eagle was worth the money. But the F-15's reputation wasn't just built on its ability to shoot down other planes. It was also built on being incredibly tough to kill. While the combat records were impressive, there is one specific event that engineers and pilots still talk about to highlight just how well-designed this machine really is. It happened in May 1983, during a training exercise over the Negev Desert. Two Israeli jets, an F-15D and a smaller A-4 Skyhawk, collided in mid-air. The collision destroyed the Skyhawk instantly, though thankfully its pilot managed to eject safely. The F-15, piloted by Ziv Nadivi, immediately went into a violent spiral. Most pilots in that situation would have ejected immediately, and nobody would have blamed them. The plane was leaking fuel and spinning out of control. However, Nadivi decided to try and save the aircraft. He pushed the throttle forward, engaging the afterburners. Whatever damage the plane had taken, increasing the speed seemed to stabilize it. Nadivi regained control and realized that if he slowed down, the plane started to roll again. So he had to come in for a landing incredibly fast, almost twice the normal landing speed. He managed to catch the arresting cable on the runway, stopping just feet from the safety barrier. It was only after he shut down the engines and climbed out of the cockpit that he understood why the flight had felt so strange. He looked back and saw that the entire right wing was gone. Not just a piece of it, but the whole thing sheared off right at the body of the plane. He had flown and landed a fighter jet with only one wing. When the Israelis sent the photos to McDonnell Douglas, 
The manufacturer initially replied that it was impossible. Their computer models said the plane should have been uncontrollable. But the F-15 has a very wide body that actually generates a significant amount of lift on its own. That, combined with the sheer thrust of the engines, allowed the fuselage effectively to act as a rocket, keeping the plane in the air despite the catastrophic damage. That impressive lift and raw power didn't just save a pilot's life, it epitomized the robust engineering that allowed the aircraft to transcend its original purpose. This brings us to a famous slogan from the F-15's development phase, not a pound for air to ground. In the beginning, designers were obsessed with creating a pure hunter. They refused to include equipment for bombing ground targets, fearing it would make the plane sluggish. They wanted a master of the sky, not a jack of all trades. However, the Air Force realized this massive fighter had the payload and range to do more. They decided to break their own rule, evolving the air-to-air -air specialist into the F-15E Strike Eagle. Critics worried this would ruin the plane, but it only strengthened its legacy. By 2026, this evolution has culminated in the F-15EX Eagle II, now acting as a powerhouse missile truck capable of carrying hypersonic weapons and more ordnance than any other U.S. fighter, the F-15 remains the undisputed king of the skies, proving that breaking the rules was the only way to ensure its future. But all the missiles and range in the world don't mean much if the plane can't survive a fight. And that leads us to the single most famous statistic in modern aviation history, 104 to 0. That is the F-15's combat record in air-to-air -air engagements. Across decades of conflict, the Eagle has shot down over 100 enemy aircraft without suffering a single loss to another fighter jet. It started in the late 70s. While the United States built the plane, pilots from the Israeli Air Force were actually the first to test it in real combat, racking up dozens of victories against Syrian MiGs. Later, during the Gulf War in the 90s, American pilots used the F-15 to dominate the airspace, accounting for the vast majority of aerial victories in that campaign. Saudi Arabian pilots also added to the tally during border conflicts. Now, we have to be clear about that zero. It doesn't mean an F-15 has never been destroyed. Sadly, Eagles have been lost to accidents, and a few were taken down by anti-aircraft missiles fired from the ground. But up in the sky, in a direct contest against another pilot, the Eagle remains undefeated. It's a track record that spans nearly 50 years, giving pilots an incredible amount of confidence every time they climb into the cockpit. But that undefeated record isn't just about skilled pilots or advanced radar. A huge part of that survival rate comes down to the physical machine itself. Simply put, the F-15 is built like a tank that can fly at twice the speed of sound. If you ever get the chance to stand next to one, the first thing you notice is the sheer size. It has two massive engines and a fuselage, the main body of the plane, that is incredibly wide. In fact, the body is designed to generate lift just like the wings do. This makes the plane stable and remarkably tough, capable of absorbing damage that would cause other jets to fall out of the sky.